Hi, I'm Dr. David Atley. In today's demonstration, we're going to be looking at planetary transits and the effect they have on the observed light of their parent stars. This is going to be one important way that astronomers can detect and characterize planets in orbit around other stars, and we'll be exploring this using the planetary transit simulator from NAPLABS. Let's get started. Okay, I've got my Map Labs open. I'll come down here to Extrasolar Planets and then click on Exoplanet Transit Simulator. That's going to open a window that shows me a distant star, a planet in front of that distant star, and the depth of the transit created by this planet moving in front of that star. Essentially, what's happening is we've got a light source, the parent star, and then we have a small dim object moving in front of it, and that's the planet. And so that planet is going to block a little bit of the light from the parent star and make the parent star look just a tiny bit dimmer. And with the correct technology, if we're really careful, we can measure that dimming. For a relatively large planet like the one that's in the default settings, we're going to have a fairly deep transit in which the parent star will get one to one and a half percent dimmer compared to its normal behavior. Let me just adjust our model planet so we're going to make it the size of Jupiter. And planets the size of Jupiter are about as big as planets typically get. There are a few oddballs, but Jupiter size is generally the limit for how physically large a planet can get. That doesn't say anything about mass, just radius. And in that case, we get a dip of about 1%. So we're going to go from 1.0 to 0.99 in overall brightness. This simulator also lets us adjust the overall radius of the planet. So I can take this slider and I can drag it down so I can make the planet get smaller. As I do that, you'll notice that the y-axis here is changing a little bit. So the depth of the transit now, instead of being 1%, is about half a percent, when I'm about 3 quarters of the size of Jupiter. Let me make that way smaller now. Let me make it about the size of the Earth, which is approximately 11% of Jupiter's radius, give or take a little bit. So now you'll notice we've gone from 1% to about one one hundredth of one percent. And that planet that was really obvious when we were looking at something the size of Jupiter has completely disappeared in this rendering. It's so small that you actually need a little arrow to point to it and tell you, no, I'm still here, there's still a planet. This is part of the reason it's taken so long for astronomers to be able to find Earth-sized planets around Sun-like stars is because the sensitivity you need to achieve in order to find a dip like this is really exquisite. But we can do it. It's been done in the recent past by satellites like Kepler, and upcoming projects like TESS also would have a chance of doing something similar. So what we see is that changing the radius of the planet changes the depth of the transit. So when we find planets, that show up using this transit method. We measure the depth of the transit, and that tells us the size of the planet. It tells us how big or small the planet is. Not mass, size. This is one really important feature of distant planets, is we want to know how big they are. We also want to know how massive they are. To find out how massive an exoplanet is, astronomers use a different method of finding and measuring the planets that we call the Doppler method. We'll talk about that in class. For now, play around with this simulator. See what happens for planets of different sizes. So say things much bigger than Jupiter or planets the size of Neptune. Change the orbital parameters of the planet, which can make it much harder to find planets by transit in the first place. Have fun as you mess around with this and I'll see you in class. 